Welcome to our review on equilibrium position. When we're talking about the equilibrium position, what we're doing is giving a description of the relative amounts of reactants and products in a reaction mixture at equilibrium. Now, what we'll find is that the equilibrium position is on the left when the concentration of reactants is greater than the concentration of products. And the equilibrium position is on the right when the concentration of reactants is less than the concentration of products. However, what we can find is that by altering conditions, we can also change the actual equilibrium position itself. And this is very useful when we're thinking about trying to make certain products which are made in a reversible reaction. We might want to change the conditions in order to drive it in one particular direction. The first condition that we could change is the pressure. So that if we change the pressure, the equilibrium position is going to move in the direction of the fewest moles of gas. So to work this out, you've got to have a look at the balanced symbol equation, paying particular attention to the state symbols. The only bits you're concerned with are the Gs, they're the gases. So if we look at the example I've given you here, on the left, we've got two moles of sulfur dioxide and one mole of oxygen. So that gives us three moles of gas on the left. And on the right, we've got two moles of sulfur trioxide. So two moles on the right. So when we consider the equilibrium position, if we increase the pressure, it's going to move in the direction of the fewest moles of gas, which means it moves towards the right because there's only two moles of gas there compared to the three on the left. The second condition is the concentration. So that if we increase the concentration of one of the substances in our mixture, the equilibrium position moves in the direction away from that substance. So that in the equation there, if we were to increase the concentration of hydrochloric acid, then the equilibrium position is going to move to the right because that's the direction away from the hydrochloric acid. The final condition that we could change is the temperature. So that when we increase the temperature, the equilibrium position is going to move in the direction of the endothermic change. So this is where we need to have a look at another bit of information that they give you in the question, which is the delta H on the right there. So if we've got a minus sign in front of our numbers, that tells us it's an exothermic reaction. If it was a positive sign, it would be an endothermic reaction. So in this case, we've been given this reaction here, which is an exothermic one. So from our NO2 to the N2O4 is exothermic. So our Ford reaction isn't what we're looking at. Therefore, if we want to know, if we increase the temperature, what's going to happen here, it's going to be the backwards reaction. Because if the forwards reaction is exothermic, it's got the negative sign, the backwards reaction must be endothermic. So in this case, if we increase the temperature, the equilibrium position will move to the left. Just to summarize then, so we've got these three conditions and the direction it moves the equilibrium position clear in our heads. If we increase the pressure, it goes towards the fewest moles of gas. If we increase the concentration, it goes away from the substance with the increased concentration. And if we increase the temperature, it goes in the direction of the endothermic reaction, which is the one with the positive delta H. Hopefully at the end of this video, you can now predict the effect of changing reaction conditions on the equilibrium position by explaining what will happen if we change the concentration, the pressure, and the temperature.